What's going on guys and in this video I'm going to talk about how to get free time and service in the army. So this is a topic that has came up in mine and my little brother's conversations as of recently because he is thinking about joining the army. Um, army reserves actually um, in the next year or so and this is something that I wish I knew beforehand so I could have gotten a little bit of extra time and service in the army. So I'm going to try to explain this as best as I could. I've tried to explain it to him so maybe I've had a little bit of a practice doing this. Um, but yeah, so starting off guys, if you didn't know, to get promoted in the military you need time and service and time and rank. So let's say uh, to get promoted to PFC you have to have a year of time and service and six months of time and rank or time and grade. Um, basically the, what that means is your time and service is like the total amount of time that you have been enlisted in the military. Your time and grade or your time and, uh, and rank is the total amount of time that you have been in that specific rank um, prior to the rank you're trying to go to. So that was kind of confusing. But let's say I'm an E2 and I'm trying to make it to PFC or E3. So in that scenario, one year time in service, six months time in grade. So I have to be in the army for one year and I have to be a PV2 or a E2 or a private. I'm saying too many names here, just confusing myself, but you have to be that prior rank for six months. Now to go to the next rank, you're gonna look be looking at specialists. So you have to have you know, two years of time in service, and you have to have one year of time in rank. So you have to be in the military for two years, and you have to be a PFC for at least a year to be um, promoted to the specialist rank. Now, the cool thing about this little, I don't know if you wanna call it a loophole, but I mean, it's kind of a loophole, is for example, if you're in the Army Reserves or you're joining, um, you swear in one time and one time only. If you're joining active duty, you swear in twice. And so what I mean by that is like, so some of you guys have already gone to MEPS and if you're going active duty, you swore in, right? So you did the whole raise your right hand and repeat after me kind of thing. Um, and then once you ship off to basic, you're gonna raise your right hand and you're gonna swear in again. And at that point, if you're active duty, that is gonna be where your time and service starts. That's not the case for the Army Reserves. If you're in the Army Reserves, the first time you swear in at MEPS, you're actually in the military. You haven't completed basic training or anything like that, but you're actually in the military, and from that date, that is when your time in service starts. So for me, uh, the day I swore in into the military, into the Army Reserves, was February the 13th, 2015, right? The day I left for basic training was May 12th, 2015. So um, that's what, like two months there or so? February, March, April, May. So dang, that's like a definitely not two months. My mind was way off on that. Sorry, guys. But um, so that was a couple months there before I had left for basic training where I didn't really feel like I was in the military. I went to one drill before basic training. I made a video about that. It was a long time ago, but I made a video about that. But on my on my LES and on all of my military information, my time in service starts on February the 13th and not on May 12th. And so what that means is for all of you guys who are trying to join in the Army Reserves, specifically you, and you already know that you want to join, go ahead and jump on that. Like, if you want to leave, you know, within a year from now, and let's say you have school or something like that, like you're a senior in high school and you want to leave at some point, you want to do the Army Reserves, go ahead and join. Like, go ahead and swear in. Go ahead and get that um, date stamped on your military record that you have you know sworn in you are now enlisted into the army and uh, to the army reserves and you're gonna start accumulating that time so let's say it was nine months okay so let's say you swear in in the army reserves and nine months later you leave for basic training well by the end of basic training it's roughly three months um, you're gonna be having a year of time in service so you could get promoted to uh, E2, you could get potentially promoted to E3, um, and you could be well on your way to get promoted to specialist right after that. So that's one way that I definitely think you guys should take into consideration. I didn't know about it. I didn't know whenever I swore in that I was gonna get that free few months of time and service. I didn't really take that into account, but yeah, I got promoted kind of based on that date. Um, so that's something really interesting. I think. 
I don't know if it's fair or if they've like I don't know. It's it's just really really interesting to me that for the army reserves you you know you get all that extra time of service like you know up to a year unless you have some kind of special condition. But you know that could really make a really big difference on getting promoted quickly in the lower ranks because you know for E1 to E2 it's only like six months. So if you have that six months. Um, in the army reserves and you've just sworn in like technically you can get promoted without even having done anything so for all you guys wanting to do army reserves enlisted definitely think about that definitely do it if you're comfortable with making the decision to join don't just join because I said that now another way that I kind of classify as free time and service is doing the split ops program in the army now this can be active duty reserves or whatever um, and if you guys didn't know, split ops is basically where you go to basic training at some point in time and then you have a large gap or usually about a year and then you go to your AIT. So it usually applies to people who go to school but it can't apply to people who have work related jobs or something like maybe if you were a teacher but that's still technically school. Um, but yeah, so basically it usually applies to guys from my experience who are trying to go to basic training over the summer so they don't miss any school and then the next summer they go to their AIT so that basically you've got no school missed, you've gone to basic, you've gone to AIT, um, usually maybe you've, you've graduated by this time. So if you were a 17 year old like a lot of you guys in high school, you're a junior, uh, you go to basic training this summer like the current summer if you were to, um, then the next summer you would go to your AIT so you would graduate next year, then as soon as you graduate you go to AIT you wouldn't have to worry about basic training or anything. And then you can start your active duty life or you can start your army reserves or whatever. So um, the cool thing about that is, for example, if you're in the army reserves, I use that example a lot because I am in the army reserves, but if you are, you go to basic training this summer and then the whole rest of the year until you go to IT, you're just gonna be drilling, right? So the cool thing about that is number one, you're getting free time and service. Also number two is you're getting paid for this, right? So it's kind of like a side job where honestly the pay as far as the time you're putting in in the reserves is actually pretty good, honestly. Uh, so that's definitely something cool. So you could have like your little actual job and do the army reserves, you know, if you're wanting to go the whole split ops route. So that's, that's really cool. So that's literally almost guaranteed a year of time and service if you have split ops. Now, I have a personal example with this. Basically, there was a guy who was in my platoon at AIT and he was promoted there to be a specialist. Now this was the only time I ever saw anybody get promoted um, to a like specialist rank, you know, maybe to PFC just on paper, but to actually get promoted to specialist at AIT was really interesting. And I didn't find out till later that he was a split ops guy, which means, like I said, you have an entire year of time in service. So if he was, if he joined the army reserves, he had a little bit of time before his contract, before he left for basic training, then he goes to basic training, then he goes to AIT an entire year later, and for my AIT it was five months long. So he hit that two year mark in the military at AIT. And you know, that just is the entire purpose of this video, is like how can you get free time and service, time and grade, time and rank, um, and that's by doing, you know, joining the army reserves early so you get that extra time and rank, or doing split ops and that's something that you guys should think about you know free time and service early on it's pretty cool now the negative thing about split ops I do want to say real quick is for me personally I'm kind of happy I did all in one one go I kind of just got it over with really quickly and, and people who do split ops sometimes they complain it's like oh I wish I would have done it all at once instead of having to split it up because it sucks both times and you know it would have just really been nice to get over with kind of like ripping off the band-aid band but you know Instead of it taking, you know, a couple months or so, you kind of rip it off halfway and then you wait a year and then you rip off the rest of the band-aid halfway. So that's just my only negative thing about that. Um, if you want to get everything done right out of the way, split ops is not for you. But if you want to miss some school or if you don't want to miss some school, actually, um, then split ops is probably the right thing for you. And remember, guys, take advantage of the whole... I don't know. I don't know if it's a loophole or something, but it's it's real. It's out there. You know, you can ask a recruiter. You can ask anybody. Whenever you swear in into the Army Reserves, you actually are in the military at that point. You don't swear in again. You're done. 
whenever you go to basic training, that's just, you're still in the military. Um, people who are active duty, whenever you swear in at MEPS, it could be, you could be in the delayed entry program or whatever, but you're not actually in the military until you leave for active duty, until you leave for basic training. And so that's something to think about. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, real quick before I go, um, I have one thing to say, two things to say actually. Number one, um, I uploaded a video, I think it was my video before last on July 4th. I had no clue it was July 4th, Independence Day. So happy late Independence Day, happy birthday America. I love this country, obviously. Um, that's why I would be willing to die for this country and or the people in it more specifically. Uh, but yeah, so happy July 4th. I hope you guys had a great um, time. I hope you had a safe time and everybody's okay. Nobody got hurt, did anything stupid. I definitely did. I went to the beach, had some fun. Um, yeah, and so that's why my videos, I was wearing the same shirt and my hair looks a little bit longer now, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so I want to say that. The other thing that I want to say is um, I want to make a fitness video sometime soon. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. Um, I have a couple ideas bouncing around my head. I definitely want to have some kind of like a demonstrational thing. I don't want to just talk about it like I am here. I want to actually show you guys some stuff. So in the comment section down below, comment any questions you have fitness related, you know, just anything like that. You're like, hey, can you make a fitness video talking about this? You know, how can you get your push-ups better? You know, uh, maybe do like some vlogs or something about running or I don't even know. Just, just anything you guys can think of, leave it down in the comment section below. I'll take it in consideration whenever I make my video topics that are related to fitness and preparing uh, physically for PT tests and basic training and all of that kind of stuff. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to stick around for more of my amazingly awesome um, videos. That was total sarcasm. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Drop.